Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Mystery Box Function Challenge. Today is a Friday, so our mystery math is especially challenging. If you'd like to play, pause the video, click the link in the description, put in as many points as you like here at the top, and see how they come out at the bottom. If you can get an idea for this one, come on back, listen to the rest of the video, and see if we get the same thing. If you're stumped, come on back anyway and see what this crazy function is all about. All right. Let's start with a zero. So right off the bat, zero gives us not a number. How is that the case? I mean, maybe we're subtracting something to make that negative and then trying to take the square root. That could be. Or there might be some other circumstance where it wouldn't be defined. I'm, hmm, it's hard to tell. Let's put in a one. Uh, a decimal close to one there. Let's put in a two. All right, now we're close to one half. How about a three? Um, okay. Looks like a very shallow parabola, maybe. Let's put in a zero. Oh, we did put in a zero. Hmm. So, and that's not defined. So whatever's happening here, it's not defined at zero. So maybe zero is an asymptote? Somehow, let's let's keep going towards the right here. I'm going to put in four. Hmm. Very gentle curve. Let's get closer to zero. Let's put in one half. Oh, I expected that to be shooting up, but it's really just close to one. Let's put in, I don't know, one third. Oh, what? Now that is a shape that we have not seen before. I'm going to put in some negative numbers. Um, I'm wondering if we're going to have symmetry or if anything is even going to be defined on the negative side. Oh, so that looks like it's the same as this point here, but reflected across the origin. So we do have some symmetry there maybe. Let's try a, oops, a negative two. Aha, uh -huh. and, th and that's keeping that same pattern. Um, so uh, if we put in a negative three, it should get a little closer to zero. Yep, okay, so that seems to be symmetrical, but what is going on here? I, it makes me think a little bit of sort of a, a cubic function because, well, it seems to shoot out to the left and right and then flatten. It's like it's cubic turned on its side. What would, what would that even be? That doesn't make a lot of sense. I'm gonna keep going with some points closer to zero. I'm going to put in a negative one half. That symmetry should continue, yes, and a negative one, one third. Mm -hmm. Seems like we're getting awfully close to zero there. What happens at, say, like a one tenth? So we're down there. So it looks like we're going up and down. So is this does this have something to do with trig? And and zero is is not defined, is an error. Huh. So I, I'm thinking two things right now. This this looks really weird, and I, I bet that there's a lot going on in here that we're not seeing from these points. Um, and it's going to get very crowded in here is what I think, because there's a lot of change between 0 and 1. Um, hmm. What if I put in... So actually, let me tell you what I'm thinking. When I got the not um, a number... I wondered, is this, is this, does this have something to do with one over x? Because technically that's not defined. Although usually the computer would give us, if we put a zero in here, we it gives us infinity, not which isn't actually correct either. Um, it'd probably be better if it gave us not a number, because that's one over zero is not a number. Um, but then this is making me think of trig. I want to put in, I want to put in one over pi or a value really close to that. So I'm going to put in 1 over 3.1415. This is not really how you're supposed to write numbers. I'm mixing fractions and decimals, but I'm going to do it and it'll accept it here. Yeah, and that got us really, really close to zero. So what if this is like um, 
a combination of one over and a trig function. That's what I'm thinking right now. And if if I put in a a zero here or something really close, if I sorry, if I put in pi here, one over pi. Yeah. So if I put in one over pi <laughs> here for x, that would make this whole thing equal pi. And we're getting closer and closer to zero. So which trig function equals zero at pi? Well, we think about the unit circle here. Here's our angle. This is zero. This is pi over two. Here's pi. The function that would equal zero at pi would be the, the y value, and that would be the sine function. So these coordinates on the endpoints, um, the x value is the cosine. So here we have the point negative one zero, and the and the sine would be um, the the y value. So is this possibly the sine of one over x? It wouldn't be one over the sine of x because that would be um, pretty recognizable as the cosecant function, and I know what that looks like. And what would happen with this one is that the the bigger the numbers get in magnitude here, the closer and closer you'd get to zero. And that looks like what that's what's happening as it goes out here. Because when you put a bigger number in here, this fraction becomes smaller and smaller. So we get closer and closer to this zero value here. And then as you as you get smaller and smaller numbers here, as it gets closer to the to zero what should happen is that it'll go all over the place. It's like it goes around the circle faster and faster. So I think we're going to see a whole bunch of stuff in the middle and then tapering off towards the ends. And that, that looks like what's happening there. I don't have any better guess than that. Um, and I think we've tested it with this one over pi and it's close enough to zero for me. Um, and since I don't have a better guess, I think, I think this is, this is what I'm, I'm going to guess. So, f of x equals sine of 1 over x. Let's let's reveal this. Yes, OK. Well, I'm really curious about the graph here. So let's go ahead and graph this. Yeah, very interesting. So you see, as the numbers get bigger in magnitude to the left and the right, they approach 0. And then as you get closer and closer to the center of the graph, it oscillates kind of wildly back and forth. So you can't even see the shapes anymore. Hmm. And then right at 0, of course, it's not defined because one over zero is not a number and you can't take the sign of that. Or, or the computer says this is infinity and I guess you can't take the sign of infinity on the computer. Well, how did that go for you? Did you see trig in this? I think it's hard to see trig in this. Did you, did you see one over X as a possibility in this because of that, that first, what we got when we put in zero? I'd love to know how this went for you. Thanks everybody.